What's up guys, Dan Watson, Learning Cameras, and that was actually shot on the Nikon Z6, which I'm using to record this video right now. So let me know what you think of that one. That was my first time shooting with that camera. Full review is actually, I'm editing it right now while you're watching this. It might actually be up depending on when you're watching this. So I'll leave a link right there if you wanna go check that out. But I'm curious what you think of the footage on that one. So let me know, it actually worked really well with this gimbal here, but here it is. This is a real star of the show right here. This is the Moza Air 2, and if it's the first time you've ever seen this, it will look a lot like the DJI Ronin S. And although it does have some similar aspects to it, I really don't feel like this is a ripoff at all. In fact, it kind of feels like a next generation Ronin S, I'll be honest with you. So, I mean, I'm a huge gimbal guy because honestly, I drink coffee all day long and my hands cannot steadily hold a camera for more than two seconds without shaking all over the place. But for most people, I actually think this is a great investment because it allows you to get something that's a little more unique. It's a shot that can't be had any other way. It allows you to get some really cool motion. There's some awesome stuff that you can do with this thing. It's even cool for time lapses. So we'll get into this one, but uh, a little bit of more footage for you and check out all the things that are gonna be really cool about this Moza Air 2. So let's talk a little bit about the build of this thing. It is built extremely well. It's pretty much all metal on this thing and rubberized grip, which is really nice, nice texture on that. Even the tripod legs on here have a rubberized grip. So when you're holding this thing like that, it's actually really comfortable to do that. Overall, very metallic build and excellent build quality. Now it might seem a little bit heavy at first because you're talking just over three and a half pounds, which if you're comparing that to like your cranes and stuff like that, it is phenomenally heavy. However, it's lighter than the Ronin S and this can hold over nine pounds, which is unbelievable and really cool. But even if you're using a smaller weight camera like this, here is the reason I like it. You have a zoom lens on this. You can actually take this straight on to 70 mil. It is not balanced at all. If I were to turn this thing on, yeah, this is not balanced at all. If I turn it back here, there's actually a well-balanced system. But even if you have heavy offset uh, loads on this thing, it will perform extremely well because these motors are capable of handling such large loads. And then other than that, it gives you a lot of balancing flexibility for using a variety of different cameras and lenses. So I, I really like having a larger gimbal than you need, and this is gonna be one of the best of them. We also have full DC power out of the back as well as a camera output. And that functionality is really nice to be able to have right on here for powering the camera and other accessories like the wireless follow focus system that you can actually buy for this. It's really nice to have an option for this from the gimbal itself because rigging this up in uh, a lot of setups can be very difficult. So having it with this system is completely wireless. You can either use this wheel for it or you can use an external wireless control. So both of those are gonna be options for controlling that setup. Now, a couple other things too. We actually have removable batteries in this one via this handle right here. This pops off, a nice thing is you can change the batteries right here without having to remove the camera or unscrew this, which is what you would typically have to do. There's four batteries inside of this, charged via the charger, and that clicks right on that. So if you need some spares, you can. However, keep in mind, you cannot charge this thing uh, just by plugging it in. So although there's a USB-C port, that is actually for upgrading firmware, even though you can do that over the app, which is really great. Although I still do wish we could charge it without having to remove those batteries. Now, if you're someone who doesn't use the follow focus system, what is really cool is that you can actually program this dial right here to control this roll, which is really nice to have. So this is not a useless dial, unlike the DJI Ronin S, which this dial is essentially useless if you're not using their, uh, their follow focus system. So it's nice to have some additional functionality for that. Now, I do want to show you this tripod plate system because it is Manfrotto standard, but it is one of the best implementations. One of the things that a lot of these larger tripods have to have is a riser to get your camera a little bit higher. It is, first of all, very nice that you can actually remove your SD cards without having to mount this off because your camera is actually very far away from this gimbal arm. That's great to see. Also, obviously your screen is not blocked from this, which aside from being really nice for uh, cameras like this, it is really cool because you can actually go completely inverted. 
and actually handhold your camera with that without having to go into different modes. So I really like having that. But this tripod system, yes, it's Manfrotto standard. However, the as uh, two actual quick releases for this, so you can actually unlock this dial. The camera will begin to slide out and you can remove that. However, that is not the adjustment for this axis. So when you put this back in, if you wanted to change your battery out, it will click back into place in one location and you're perfectly balanced. If you do need to adjust this fore and aft, you can actually do that with a separate dial here. This is really a genius solution for handling this. It is my favorite implementation. It is so easy to go from this to another tripod, change your batteries, and no longer fear having to rebalance this thing every time I take it off. It is awesome to see this and yeah, this is one of the best. And then also you can lock this back axis here, and here it is locked right here. So it's nice to see that both for locking, and then uh, sometimes it's really easy when balancing to have this axis locked, so that's good to see. Now you cannot lock any of the other axes, so keep that in mind. And also because this doesn't screw off, it's actually a little bit hard to travel with it. It's large because you cannot take this down into anything smaller than what you see right here. Another big improvement is that you have a full LCD display right here, which is one of the nicest things I've ever seen. You can actually access just about every function of this gimbal straight from that, which is unbelievable. So you no longer have to rely on your app for any of these controls. It is all possible right from the gimbal itself. And it is great because I change these things up all the time. And then even if that wasn't enough, there is also additional functionality here. Not only are you seeing exactly what your settings are and able to change that with this menu right here, you can actually fine tune your adjustments simply by rotating this. So if I wanna make it more responsive, I turn those up, my speeds, which are all custom set, even via this, you don't have to open the app to custom set those. So I have mine custom set depending on what I like for shooting, but if I wanna quickly slow those down or speed that up, all I have to do is rotate that. Or I can just hit this button right here, which is a sports mode. Doing that will make the camera extremely responsive. So that's unbelievable to see. And then if you double tap that, it will actually go into that inception mode. So you can get some really cool shots like this, or you can rotate that forward and have those kind of killer shots that you see in some movies right here. So really easy to do that. Double click on this and it brings everything back for you. And just like that, you're back at your setup. So again, another benefit to this is so many. It's really one of the amazing gimbals out there. You can click this trigger and that allows you, you'll see this in a lot of other gimbals like that DJI Ronin S, and that allows you to go into full lock mode. Just like other gimbals, you can also access like ISO, aperture, shutter speed, anything like that. Even motorized zooming is an option if you have a lens that supports that. However, right now, this is only a Canon option, and it does say Panasonic and Sony support is coming, so we'll see if they can implement that. Uh, it, still, the support is actually better than the DJI Ronin S, which didn't even have any support for turning on and off the camera with Sony camera, so I was relying on this, uh, this IR Blaster, which was really hit and miss. So this one, you can still plug in your Sony camera, and it works for starting and stop recording. That's just gonna be it, unless you have a Canon camera, for now at least. So the big question is obviously the quality, and I think you saw in the footage there, this is probably the best gimbal I have ever used. It's certainly one of the best, and uh, it stabilized almost anything I threw at it better than everything else on the market. Now, something that you should know, if I were to try and find negatives, and honestly, I really have to try and find negatives, this would be it. So you do have a quarter 20 and a three ace on the bottom, which a lot of other gimbals have. You also have a three ace here, which it comes with an adapter to convert that into a quarter 20. So both of those are really your only options. I do wish we had something on the top here. It's a heavy duty gimbal. I can light mount a light or a microphone on here. Really a microphone is the only thing I'd want on here. Rather than doing it on the camera itself, because when I do it on the camera, I can't go down like this and go into my other mode. So I like to be able to mount that up here or to have an accessory mount on the side would be nice to be able to fit that in. I do find myself accidentally scrolling this so I my gimbal will respond more quickly than I'm thinking it will. 
and I don't realize that I'm actually hitting the scroll wheel. So a lock button would be cool on that. But you know, these are all so minor compared to anything else. And I, like I said before, I do wish I had the ability to just plug this in and charge my batteries. But functionality wise, everything, this is among the best on there. Starting price for this is $5.99. You can also use this for time-lapse options. Uh, the app is really great. I love that you can update the firmware from the app. That's one of the best things because I hate having to download software on my computer and then risk whatever I'm downloading from that one and hook this up to a computer. So great to be able to do that. I actually updated mine wirelessly from the app. No problems at all. So good to see there. Honestly, guys, if you are looking for a gimbal, I, I think you can't do any better than this one right here, especially given the price. Now, I did see that the Ronin S was on sale. If you were following me on Facebook or Twitter, you saw that too. Really nice $200 sale. So if you're not, go ahead and do that. I'm posting a lot of pictures and footage on Instagram as well, at Learning Cameras on all of those, so check those out. But I think if you're in the in need for a gimbal or want to upgrade from some of your other options, this is not only built extremely well, has so much functionality that those gimbals do not have, Manfrotto plate, even if you're using light lenses and you don't see the need for upgrading to this high-end uh, large weight system, trust me. Let me know again what you think of that footage on the Nikon Z6. Uh, and if you're interested in this or anything else, check out the, the links that I have below. You can buy this camera as well as see all my video gear setup that I usually use. And uh, again, check out that Nikon Z6 review. It should be really fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you real soon in a new video.